Good afternoon. This is First Warren Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich. On this glorious first day of spring, we finally have spring-like weather. Temperatures in the 60s, plenty of sunshine, the most sunshine we've seen since last Saturday. And today, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, three days of perfect spring weather. Starting Sunday, things go downhill, and now we got to start talking about the possibilities next week of not only cold, which we've been hitting at for several days now, but now the potential for a winter storm, which we kind of hinted at, but there's some things that are coming a little bit more clear as we go towards next week. It's still a, a marginal event. Uh, it would be historic in some cases, uh, un unprecedented um, in others. So we'll get into a little bit of that, but here's what I think is going to happen right now. Again, next three days, no worries right now. We'll start with the model date, and the first thing we're going to do uh, is we're going to use the GFS model here. The European model GFS are actually in somewhat good agreement on this system as well as the Canadian model. There's very small differences which could have big impacts but there's a storm in the southeast. They all have it. So here we are. We're going to start on Monday morning. The, the, this is the uh, 11 or excuse me 8 a.m. Monday morning um, as we go through the afternoon. Um, we've got cold air building in across the eastern half of the country and that is probably the most certain part of this whole scenario is how cold it is for this time of year, late March, early April. Um, we start to see a wave of low pressure start to come out of the Rockies uh, Monday evening. Whoops, we jumped ahead way too quickly there. Um, and that wave of low pressure is going to start moving across the uh, lower southern part of the country here, and it's going to link up with the southern branch system, and we're going to start to see low pressure develop uh, off the southeast coast. So this is uh, going into... Tuesday morning, this is uh, at 8 a.m., our low pressure is forming right here. We've got cold enough air, not only at the surface, this is the key, this is really cold air a lot, the 850 millibars we call about 5,000 feet off the ground and up. So even if the surface temperatures are 35, 38 degrees even, we could still see wet snow at, at the ground level because it's so cold a lot. And again, this is uh, you know going into Tuesday morning. We go into the afternoon, our low starts to crank up there. And as we go uh, into the evening hours, this is 2 o'clock Tuesday, um, we've got a pretty potent low pressure system. But notice, no wintry mix, it's either snow or rain, and that's the kind of setup with this. But the defining line between where there's going to be some heavy snow and some just really cold rain is very narrow. And that's why it's really tough to really pin this down and why there's still a lot of doubt why there's potential for a winter storm. I'll be honest with you, there's just as much potential this is going to be a cold rain. But I do want to give you the heads up because this could be a pretty good you know, dumping of snow for late March. The low cranks up and moves off the coast. Um, at the same time, colder air tries to move back in, which would definitely change everything to wintry weather, but that's also when the moisture moves out. That's pretty typical uh, with these systems. We start to see some drying. This is northwest flow snow on the backside. The mountains really could get a pretty good dose of snow out of this as the low then cranks up the coast, and now you're talking about uh, going into uh, you know Thursday, Wednesday morning into Thursday. So that low cranks up and goes off the northeast coast. But again, the peak of the storm is right here at 2 o'clock Tuesday afternoon. There it is. I want to sh switch this over to snowfall, and you can see we'll go in a little bit closer. You can see there's a pretty good area of snow. This is about 1 to 2 inches of wet snow, and again, a lot, a lot of melting, not only at the ground, because the ground's going to be warm from our recent warm-up, as well as off the surface. So this will give you an idea, because um, this is snow depth, and you can actually see it melting um, as the low pulls away, but there could be a couple inches of snow on the ground. How much snow are we talking about? Let's look at the uh, accumulated snowfall maps from the GFS. And again, the first thing you notice is a pretty good heavy snow over the Piedmont, um, but a break back towards the mountains and the very sharp gradient between who sees snow and who doesn't. Uh, if we're going to miss out on the snow, I think it's actually going to end up very close to our east because this is often the case as the low cranks up. And one of the thing that, things that's happened in the last run of the GFS model is the low is starting to trend further offshore, and that would actually pull the moisture away, which in essence would mean probably less precipitation. I think that's the big monkey wrench in this whole thing is um, the amount of moisture in the track of the low. Um, if this thing hugs the coast, much higher potential we could see some significant snow. Now, how rare is an event like this? Uh, this is a quick look at all of the snowfalls, measurable snowfall, a tenth of an inch or higher, that have occurred in Charlotte at 
or after March 25th. So you can see on March 25th, 1971, we had 5.4 inches. March 25th, the following year, we had 3.7 inches. And then two years later, on the exact same date, we had 1.4 inches. So there's something about March 25th. And if you're ever wondering when the latest measurable snow in Charlotte, it was April 20th in 1904. We just had under an inch. So it's not unprecedented, but you see that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times in 136 years we've had snow on or after March 25th. That's only 6.6% of the years, which means it's a reoccurrence um, probability of about every 15 years. So not unprecedented, but if we were to see snow on the 25th, it'd be the first time since the 70s that we've seen anything like that. And that's where you start getting into kind of a, you know, territory that's kind of historic. I think the biggest story about all of this is going to be just how cold it is. Because let me show you something really quickly um, is the 850 millibar temperatures. The dark blue is the freezing line at 5,000 feet. That's typically what we look at for snowfall. And when you look at these 850 millibar temperatures, we call it at 5,000 feet. This is just insane for late March. I mean, look at the, how cold this air is coming down out of Canada. So to me, the cold is going to be a record breaker. We'll likely set um, those, those low maximums all across the eastern half of the country. This is a huge Arctic high. You're looking at about 1030 millibar high with a low that's about 992 millibars. So big time potential next week. Still a lot of caveats. Much more confident we're going to see a winter storm to our north and maybe northeast. For the Charlotte area, the southern Piedmont, still some question marks. Something we're keeping an eye on. And of course, I'll start talking about it today on TV at 4, 5, and 6, and we'll keep an eye on it as we go throughout the weekend.